Well, listen, this is a moment that we've been waiting for quite some time. Head coach Mike McDaniel, welcome to the Fish Tank. We're really excited to have you here. I mean, not as excited as I am to be here, you know. I'm just pumped you guys gave me the invite. <laughs> the invite yeah, has been yeah, out it's there been in the mail. It's for been quite in the some mail. time, yeah. but we understood that uh, things had to happen the way they needed to happen. But we're here and we're in the moment. Well, happy to be here and I, I can't wait to get started. Let's get started then. Drown man. me in this fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, Coach, you've been here 123 and a half days. But who's counting, right? Who's counting, right? That's um, yeah, three quarters. <laughs> three quarters. <laughs> So what, if anything, have you, you learned in this time period? Um, anything surprised you at all? And, you know, has there any been a moment like, you know, damn, I'm the head coach of, you know, the Miami Dolphins, which is, you know, you self-proclaim that it's a dream job. Tell us a little bit about the first 123 and a half, uh, three quarters. There you go. Um, you know, I think one thing that was uh, something I couldn't foresee, something that was kind of surprising, um, was the the realization when when you have your footing within the building and you're you're getting to you uh utilize all these different relationships and um is that you, you work your whole career to to get the opportunity to have this job but then and and you're going through the coaching ranks and you have that pinnacle which is um to be a head coach and when you get to your dream job, the one that you've been preparing for your whole career, at that moment is when you're the most dependent upon other people mm. to do your job. It brings you back to uh, what is your job as the head coach, and that's to, um, you know, really, the way I see it is to serve everyone that's working for you, so that, um, because you are um, quite literally vulnerable to uh, what they're able to do, because there's just, there's just, it's too big of a uh, undertaking to do anything close to it being one person. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it's like the ultimate team on top of a team sport, where where you're. So so in that process, um, uh, it was early and often I, I realized that I better trust every person that that I'm working with, and um, I, it's it's my job to. Uh, pick the right people to uh, to touch the players, for instance, uh, uh, as a coaching staff. And then um, on top of that, uh, it's my job to really empower them. And, you know, as a people get it kind of twisted um, as a head coach, y you, you really have to um, make sure all the people that are are working with you for that ultimate goal. They have, you have the power to give them the tools they need to do their job. So in that period of time that we very clearly have established uh, how many days it's been, um, there hasn't been a lot of time because you've run an entire off season program here, off season conditioning, we've had the OTAs, we've had the mini camps. Uh, how have you felt about what your team has accomplished during this time? And then as, you see your guys kind of like as a parent, you see mm -hmm. your kids packing their proverbial bags and they're heading out for, for this six week break. What is your approach to what that should look like and what message are you sending them off with? Well, uh, it's been very gratifying, satisfying, because you, you make, you know, it, it's fast and furious. You're, uh, you get a call on um, uh, February 6th um, at 2.46 p.m. West Coast and said, hey, you have a job. Next day, great call. The, uh, I, I think it was a great decision, by the way. Yeah, yeah right, um, there you go. <laughs> the, uh, That's right. That's the, right. Uh, then the next day, you're flying out. When I got here to the Miami Dolphins, one thing that was very apparent to me um, when I walked through the building, this, this being my seventh different franchise, um, it was obvious to me from the jump that the people in the building were, were very eager, were very qualified. It was a well-oiled machine um, with the support staff. And it, it, it was like, wow, these, these people are yearning um, for everything to be in concert and go one direction. So you make that assessment 
Um, and then for you to have a off-season program, um, and then on top of that, you're, you're assessing the players in the same regard. Right. And yeah. You're see, all I saw was a, a, a team that had a very hungry um, young roster that uh, for the last two seasons um, started the first quarter of the season behind the eight ball and then found a way to have a winning record. So between the building and all the people working within it and then the, uh, the players and, and the young hungry individuals that um, I saw and then on top of that a fan base mm. It was like, wow, this is what an opportunity. Um, if we can just go in one direction, I think we could really make a lot of leaps and bounds in terms of how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis and get everyone moving in one concerted effort. So for now, looking at after the entirety of the off season, that's the satisfying part because you're, you're projecting this idea um, you think you're right, you don't totally know until it happens. Sure. And what I do know is that um, we, you know, from all those stops in, in my path, that you know all in when you see it. And from the, uh, from the meal room all the way down the building to uh, players, coaches, everyone, um, they, they have not wavered. There's, it's always tricky when you're importing a, a new philosophy and a new uh, just way of going about business. Are people going to resist? And there's been a none of that. I'm, ve I'm very excited about the work we've put in to position ourselves to continue to work to ultimately gain results. So the, the, it is what it is. We are several months from playing a game. We're I think from Saturday, we're 45 um, days away from reporting back to training camp. And, but for what we, can accomp we could have accomplished from February 7th, when I got my feet on the ground, to now, um, very pleased with uh, where we're at. That's good to hear. Yeah, That's absolutely. definitely good to hear. But, but again, all that hard work and everything to get to this point, and then it's like, bye, guys. I'll, I'll see you in a month and a half. Right. So. Like, what do you say to them when they, because they're grown men, you've said that, you want to treat them like grown men, but. Did you bug me? Because I was just talking about that today. I, I prefer not to answer that with a camera. Oh, all right. Um, no, it's, it, football is a collection of individuals um, working towards a common goal in that you can't do anything by yourself. And so there's a lot of trust that has to be, uh, undergone and you, you really have to trust your teammates so to speak uh, and so what I talked to, to uh, the team about uh, specifically today as a matter of fact is the to understand that it's not only you know when you're going on your days away um, it's important to relax it's important to spend time with your family but also it's important to position yourself so that at the start of training camp it's vital that your teammates can count on you um, to be in training camp shape, not get to training camp and get in get shape. In shape right. Because what happens there is then you have soft tissue injuries, people have setbacks, and the team can't afford that. We're, we're a young team, but you know, football, the opportunity is always now. And you, and you have to jump at that. And anything done um, that, doesn't prepare you for um, when training camp starts, it affects other people. And this is, this is, uh, you're not just, you're not just affecting yourself. Understand that your teammates are depending upon you to do what's right when no one's watching. And, and that, so that was a major um, point uh, that was made um, today along, uh, as well as commending them for the the job well done to this point. Understand that does it mean wins or losses? Who knows? Yeah. Because you, you haven't gone to that stage yet. What you can control is the off season phase one through three um, and 
we, I feel very confident that we've put our best foot forward so that we can, um, we, we've positioned ourselves to compete in training camp uh, where, the, where the organization and the fan base wants us to compete at. Coach, when you, you talked about, you know, the seven different stops, and let's talk about when you arrived in Miami. You came here, and a lot of people uh, viewed you kind of as a, a run game expert. But when we in South are looking back, you, you've had your foot or fingerprint on or coached like every single position on the offensive side of the ball. And with that expertise, you know, does that prepare you to be able to coach both sides of the ball pretty much every single position because of, you know, what you know about offensive play per position? And that could tell you what, how defensive players should be playing okay. as well. Well, first and foremost, that is great investigative jur journalism right there. I mean, that you is just got pretty cool journalist right there. Hey, I'm on that side now. <laughs> um, but you're exactly right. So the one of the things that really, really I feel um, ha, is helping me do my job um, with the Miami Dolphins is that I, I've been afforded the opportunity to immerse myself in different positions, not only um, just interacting with guys, but more so being involved in position groups. I, was, I started in the pass game as a, a receiver guy. And so when you're in that room and then you transfer to um, offensive line and then you're, you're in quarterbacks and being in the room with the guys, you have to put yourself in their shoes. When you put yourself in their shoes, you're talking directly what applies to them, not in big picture, but not only are you getting an expertise in the position that you're coaching, but you're also on the flip side, getting an expertise on the d defensive players. So as a head coach, um, it, it's very valuable um, to be able to speak from everybody's walk of life, to, to relate to them, to uh, know um, the issues that they have. You, you don't go into it thinking that, you know, it's not like I started my career and said, I needed to do that um, to be a head coach. I didn't really, you know, the, the opportunities that were um, in each walk of life that uh, I just jumped on those. But an unintended consequence and um, something that I'm glad that, uh, I'm, I'm extremely grateful that I was afforded those opportunities is that you can um, better relate to uh, players and, and put yourself in their shoes, which is what they need. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so this this week, uh, one of my favorite things is watching the coach's press conference. You gave what I felt was a very interesting answer to a question about your coaching style. Someone asked you about your coaching style and where it came from. And I thought you gave some really neat perspective and talked about how you really didn't pattern yourself uh, mm -hmm. after anyone. And, and I thought it was very insightful as to, to why. But I do wonder like you're coaching and you're studying the game, but you know, are you also studying kind of the art of leadership? And was there anything in, on your path, uh, whether it was within football or outside of football that you sourced to not copy or pattern, but to just kind of build and start to compile the, the leader that you would become? I was a history major um, and I'm into documentaries. Uh, what I say there's a, a particular exact example, um, I'd be hard pressed to say, uh, but I, I, I do know one thing. I've always thought there's a competitive advantage um, by taking things from your experiences mm -hmm. that people um, can often miss what's right in front of them. So in a deliberate nature, um, just observing how, how people respond um, to different types of uh, encouragement, criticism, uh, development. The bottom line is, is that we're in a business that um, what can get lost in the whole process is that the best way I can lead is that I fully invest in people and try to get the best out of them. Mm -hmm. And that authentic intention, so to speak, I think, um, I, I think goes a, 
a lot further than people um, give it its due. So I, I, I'm sorry if I don't totally answer the question, because honestly, I don't really, nothing jumps off. Yeah. Um, I, I just know I've been influenced a lot by a, a lot of different avenues. Um, you know, the second that, uh, that I got a Netflix account, I was just you were killing the documentary game. We'll have to get some, recomm <laughs> we'll have to get some recommendations on, yeah. the, on, the, uh, on the documentary. To me, there's information um, there, that you can exhaust that's right in front of you, and it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly, okay, player, coach, football. But you can find that practical application from something that you saw. Absolutely. That may have nothing to do with football. Absolutely. And I, and I think that gives you, um, there, there's a lot more relatedness to uh, coaching football players and um, being a part of uh, an organization and motivating people. There, there's um, countless, num there's, there's information um, uh, s surrounding each and every moment of your life if you just pay attention. Mm. Yeah, you that talk about, yeah, it's very, it, it, Deep. It's always. <laughs> always, man. I love it. I love it. You talk about leadership, you know, I mean, I was thinking about, you know, what I wonder about the process um, when it, you're talking about a little bit, some, some of the things, Seth, that you might have drawn from, but also the responsibility as a leader, you know, players, coaches, um, you know, you've been there. You've been in a lot of the, the coaches' shoes in particular, you know, for 15 plus years as assistant coach. And, you know, Given the time you spent, you know, as an assistant coach, in your career in their shoes, what do you think those individuals that you're coaching now, that you're the head man of, what do, what do you think some of the things that they need or expect from you as the head man now? One of the pillars of my, my coaching philosophy in general um, is not to lose sight of the fact that everyone involved, you, you, just, you just walk into the Miami Dolphins headquarters or this is their dream regardless of where you're at in the building regardless or if you're a player you're dealing with people's dreams um, and so never to take that lightly mm. to to understand that you can impact their dreams and so uh, for in, in its simplest form that's how I view my job is to never stray from that idea that, hey, you have the power to participate in, be a part of, and your job is to really um, do everything you can to, to really maximize what, what people are able to get out of their dreams. That is an incredible responsibility, um, which makes it pretty easy uh, to um, do whatever it takes to, to get things done. People are depending upon you to do whatever you can to best maximize what they can do with their dreams. That is a, it is a big responsibility, but extremely fulfilling, um, very, very self-motivating um, in, in that light. And it's, you know, I feel extremely fortunate um, that, that have been given that opportunity and do not take it lightly for one second. I've never thought of coaching I, I, like that. I know. Caretaker I know, of man. dream. I know, right? It's pretty cool. Yeah, so, and how um, so far have the, the coaches been responding, especially my boys Sam and Pat and <laughs> Wes, how, how have those cats been responding to, to, you know, to the, the, the opportunity you've given them? Um, well, you know, the, another part of the uh, the job as I see it is not to f for you to do the job and connect with people as best possible is not lose sight of when you were in their position because the second uh, so then when you don't lose sight of that um, you can you can better relate to their journey their issues uh, the what what is giving them uh, what gives them concern on a day-to-day -day basis what motivates them what what empowers them, and for me, I I didn't take lightly at all um, how when a boss of mine would say, "Hey, here's the objective. 
you're responsible for it. I'm not going to micromanage it. If you have autonomy to a degree or if you are you, you have your own responsibility and you have the right people, those people you'll get the most out of because they'll feel like it's they're owning something while, while also, you know, they might find different ways to um, uh, do stuff that that is far better than you can e even have thought of because they feel ownership. They're a part of, you know, it's a, it, it, and I make sure that the staff never loses sight of the fact that it is all of us together. Um, and with our coaching staff here, uh, they've really, it's, it's been very awesome for me to watch them work. And um, I, I actually told the offensive staff today when, when we were watching film, I said, it, it's been, you guys have done an outstanding job um, attacking the whole process. At the end of the day, they have a ton of ownership. It's like we have a ton of minority owners within, uh, with, within the coaching staff and, and within the building and, and that, you know, to me, over time, you'll, you'll reap the most benefits. Coach, you're talking about spending time in the offensive uh, staff and, and meeting. You know, the guy above you spent, I guess, whole time in the offensive room. Do you find yourself bouncing around now, though, to, since you know so much about so many positions, do you bounce around a little bit to, from meeting to meeting, or do you find yeah. yourself more in the quarterback no, I, room? For, for me, um, I think it's important to be everywhere. Yeah. And so the, the, to have a relationship so that you can say X, Y, or Z to any given player at any time and for them to respond to you, you, ha they, you have to have investment in their process, in their, uh, and so whether it's just coaching staff meetings, um, I, I make sure I'm involved in those. Player meetings, they'll I'll randomly kick the door in to <laughs> j just to keep them on their toes. Any um, cool music that you have played while you, when you do that? It's happened multiple times. <laughs> uh, I haven't had, I haven't had a. Uh, generally, I don't really have like a, uh, any, a boombox or anything of that nature. I'll just do a, a shock and awe, literally kick the door in, Love um, it. and just and just keep them on their toes, and then um, say uh, say one or two lines that I have prepared that I think are funny. I'm not sure if they'll hit, but if, yeah. but regardless, I just say it and exit. So, that so they, it doesn't right. matter. The re in and your my, mind, they hit. Oh yeah. Every <laughs> time. <laughs> Never misses. Yeah. I love it. So it, it kind of leads me to my next question here. Something that I consistently hear, um, whether it's people who are working with you now or people who you have worked with in the past, uh, say about you is that you're just very comfortable being yourself. And what I wonder is your entire professional career has been in a world that hasn't taken too kindly to outside of the box, right? This is football oftentimes, or at least the perception, is that there's these very strict boundaries and there's a way that you act as a football player or a way that you act as a football coach. And, and I just wonder if whether it was coming up through this process or even in these 123 and three, three quarters, quarters days, thank you, um, have you ever felt the need or even pressure to conform in any way? Yeah, I was a 22 year old um, in, in Denver and then as a 23 year old uh, in Houston was my first full-time job. You know, there was Andre Johnson in his prime um, and, and I was a kid that played Ivy League football. <laughs> so, understanding that I had to have value for them to listen to me was one piece, but the bigger piece that was interjected is that if um, early, and it was something that just hit my brain, was that if the players can smell a fraud mm. from a mile away, and the second they, that you give them anything that isn't true, honest, and you know, what, whether it's actual information that's correct or just you being yourself, um, there's the people are paying more attention than you realize. Yeah. It's not something that I think about. Um, I, I guess I've never really felt pressure because it didn't really make sense to me. If you just focus solely on how can I make them better and fixate on that, 
it doesn't matter how it comes across because that the, they want the same thing. Everyone just wants to do well. And that, and it's, it's really that simple. So whether, however that manifests itself, I, I wouldn't know how else to be other than myself because I, I don't think about that portion. Because we talked earlier about, you know, the guys um, breaking for the summer. How excited are you about training camp starting, though? I mean, your first training camp as the head man, seeing all the people, you know, in the, in the stands, is that this beautiful facility we have, hearing the pads and seeing the pads and guys actually getting at it. And then what follows that is the season. How, how, how stoked are you about that part of it, man? I wish it was happening tomorrow um, because – one, one of the, my favorite aspects uh, that's kind of lines up with um, maybe a life philosophy, so to speak, uh, is that the, and, and one of my favorite aspects of this job is I feel like this job is all about handling adversity. And real adversity comes with, with uh, w when you have the approaching season when you have um, you know injuries you have um, uh, you lose leads you you lose a game or two that's where I see the nuts and bolts of um, being a head coach that's where it lies mm -hmm. and philosophically I've always looked at life kind of that way where um, it's not necessarily uh, if but when and it's a game of uh, who can handle adversity the best as opposed to who can avoid adversity entirely. So that aspect of the head coaching position and this particular team and the way that they've approached um, the off season, we've, we've had adversity in the off season as well, but you, you attack it and people get through it and um, become better from it. It gives you a taste of what's coming up, um, which you know is just heightened when um, it becomes live bullets. Look, this is football is a zero sum game. You know we're going to know at the end of every Sunday uh, if if the team was successful, did they win or did they lose. At the end of this season, we're going to know what the record is, and and you can evaluate success uh, in that way. But how does, how does Mike McDaniel define success? Is it strictly in wins and losses? Is it strictly in what the score is at the end of a game? Or is there something deeper there uh, that will allow you to define success? Yeah, no, I think to, for me to define success, I, uh, it starts with a, a baseline of I have to be completely honest with myself. The reason why I say honest is that Success to me is if you assess the entirety of a situation, entirety of um, the the resources that you have and 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 the situation in front of you. Success is do you maximize what a player, a unit, and a defense, an offense, a special teams? Do you get out? With honestly looking in the mirror, are you getting out the most best possible result from all ind individuals um, uh, involved? And so it is because there's too many compounding variables. So to just black and white look at results, I, I think you're shortchanging um, your role as a as a coach. So for to me, I want to make sure that um, I do right by every single individual involved, that I completely exhaust preparation, um, that, that I'm completely invested and do right by um, the, the organization in general with how I commit myself to it. And the, the results, although they're important, it's much more um, process over product for me. With that being said, you know, Success is always judged a lot of times at the beginning, at the end of a half, and the end of a game. So with that being said, we're going to jump into our two-minute drill. Oh, wow. You ready, Coach? Yeah, how many timeouts do I have? 
Yeah, well, you know what? We've changed it a couple of times. Um, so I figured I should have known he was going to ask me that yeah, question. Yeah. You got to know the, 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 know the scenarios. Parameters. Exactly yeah, right. All right. So you have zero timeouts. Okay. All right. You, but All you right. have 158 on the clock, just a little under two minutes. Where's the ball at? Ball's on. You're backed up on your own 20. Oh, that's plenty of time. Plenty of time. Yeah, 158. Right. We're good. Let's go. Ready to go? All right, here we go. All right. Priest is going to start the clock. Priest has got well, the we clock. Let two seconds go off. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. All right. What was the most prized football card in your collection? Woo. Um, the 80, was it 89 or 90, Barry Sanders rookie card? 89. 89. Yeah, I think it was score. Score. Yeah. 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 That's, a, that's a big one. What was the one card that you never had but wished that you did? The, I recently got my hands on it. Um, it's one of the positive, the positives about being the Dolphins head coach was the Dan Marino rookie card. Got the Dan Marino rookie. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it. It was strong, but it was <laughs> hard to get. And after he pumped that 5,000 spot in 84, like it was a, it was yeah. a hefty price that I could afford for <laughs> a long time. As it should have been. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Same question for Sneaks. The most prized pair of kicks you got in your collection? Um, whew, got a lot of shoes. Um, my wedding shoes. Oh, oh, that's a great answer. Well All right, played. the clock is running. We're going to well keep played. it moving here, get right up to the line. So if you had 1998 version of this guy, O.J. McDuffie, oh, on your roster for one snap, one snap, what player are you calling for him? Uh, you know what? For O.J., I'm calling, I'm calling what we call a sluggo, which is a slant and go, because the, the dude had composure and – a lot of times when you have a double move with receivers, they get all too excited that it's too big for the moment <laughs> right. and ruin the whole thing. So um, I, I know you catch plenty of slants. So one play, I'm going to the crib with that guy. So I love it. All I right. love it. We got one, one, more, got one, one, one last question. Tough for opponent, a Yale final exam or Josh Boyer's defense? Ooh. Hmm. The clock is running, coach. Well, I mean, <laughs> there were some pretty tough yellow <laughs> <games. But laughs> uh, Josh, Boyer's, Josh Boyer's defense um, is, uh, uh, it's probably would take the overall cake um, because there's, uh, there, there's so many different ways um, with the scheme and with the, with the way they utilize all their bullets so many different ways that they can get you, that you could fail the test. That's right. There it is. That's, That's right. the two-minute drill. Right. Coach, you've been incredibly generous with your time, and, uh, and we've been looking forward to this since yeah, yes, the day you have. got here. Um, so we have some gifts for you. We have some parting gifts for you. I'm glad to hear that you got the 1984 uh, Tops Dan Marino rookie mm -hmm. card. But in one of your first interviews that you did with our Dolphins Podcast Network brother, Travis Wingfield, you indicated that one of your first memories of falling in love with this sport was sitting on your living room floor, mm -hmm. sorting through some 1985 tops cards. Mm -hmm. And you had a Duper, and you had a Clayton, but you didn't have a Marino. That's right. So as soon as I heard that, I went into the personal collection. Wait. I went into the Seth Levitt personal collection and pulled this out. Wait. It's a little off center. Um, Wait I had a, a minute. I couple of them, but I didn't give you the one that was mint. But this is for you, so there wow, you go. Wow, that is outstanding. <laughs> so that's... Yeah. Uh, that's been sitting in a box for quite some time. Yeah, and he looks more athletic in person, <laughs> right, right. even though he's older. <laughs> it's the shoulder pads. We'll blame yeah, that on the is. shoulder pads. That is awesome. So there you go. You can I add that to the appreciate that. It, It's my pleasure. Well, this is waiting. real, too. No, that's real. That's yeah. legit. That yeah. was like an actual, not bought online or anything. That yeah. was me being that same kid. And uh, How I, cool is that? I appreciate feel, that. Thank it, you. It's my pleasure. Yeah. yeah. And, and Coach, when I met you at uh, Tua's Luau, mm -hmm. You know, you had mentioned that, you know, you wanted to, you wish you had called your mom to, you know, get one of your OJ McDuffie cards from the house, you know. So instead no, of you, you bothering, <laughs> instead no, of you, you bothering your mom, you know, I've got you, your own personal hey. one. Now, do you Let always me. carry one of these? In your yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there we go. Personalized. Oh, how cool is that's that? Right, that's right. <laughs> that is, that is, so don't I bother mean, mom, all right? We're good. We got that you. That is outstanding. <laughs> wow.
personally signed too. Got my name on it. Fins up. Let's go. Let's go, baby. All Check right. Let's go, is that, coach. Is that what we say? Let's when go. You get something like that. I mean, we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has been documented. Well, this was. I, I had a feeling this was going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it, it exceeded all expectations, and um, can't wait to. Uh, I can't say I'm as as excited as you because I have to imagine you're pretty excited for the season to get here. But we are looking forward to it, and and, and just thank you for your time. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, and. Um, whether it's false or it's true, the enthusiasm in general, I appreciate. Yeah. Oh, it's it, real. It is true. Oh, it's real. Yeah. Thanks for diving in, Coach. Appreciate it.